All right, so a little follow-up on naming your transducers on your Laurentz units. Um, it's kind of a follow-up to an on-the-water training session I did today. Um, I just want to go over that process with you um, because as you can see right here, instead of it just saying channel one or channel two, it actually tells you, you know, what transducer you're actually sourcing your sonar page off at the time and it'll also show up right up here. So I just abbreviate console, which is where I'm sitting at with CON, all right, and then the transducer type. But on this particular unit, I have both channel one. I'll go up here for a second and show you that on the back, I have both channel one, the blue connector, and channel two connected on the back of my unit. So there's two transducers right there. So a couple things that you have to verify first is whenever you have more than one transducer connected, it's considered being multi-sourced. So if you press the power button once, go to settings, and we go to sonar, you can see right here, sonar, network sonar mode, multi-source. Means you have more than one transducer connected to this particular unit. You can see that in both cases, channel one and channel two are turned on. I have network sonar off because I have no desire for my preferences to share the sonar information from the transducers that are connected to this unit with the ones up front. When I'm at the console, this is my office. When I'm up front, that's my office. So that's a preference. Some guys like to share them. I turn network sonar off, okay? But I have multi-source on channel one and channel two both on and then what we want to do is we want to go into installation and you can see right up here i've already named them and this is where you would name name them so on channel one which you can touch here and that'll allow you to move back and forth between channel one and channel two so when i touch channel one all right you can see down here through transducer ID or XID that the transducer type has already been detected automatically as a TM150M uh, and you're not even able to change that because of the XID or transducer ID feature. All right, so that's all cool. You have the right type of transducer. Oh, wanna cancel that. Um, you have the right type of transducer, but it's helpful right up here right to name your transducer so this is where you can do it so source name and you can see right here that i just typed in con for console space tm150 all right and then whenever you do this you press enter all right and save okay all right so now that one's done and the same location you can go back power button once settings sonar installation this time when i touch up here on the source all right i'm going to choose this unit channel two if you don't name your transducers this is what you're going to see this unit channel one this unit channel two and if you don't recall or memorize which transducers connected to which channel if you even you know know the difference because they're typically rigged all right by the uh, marina or wherever you bought your boat all right, and that's all it's going to show. So by naming them, it makes everything a lot easier. All right, so if I touch this one, channel two, you can see I did the same thing here. Console, channel two, all right, and I named it console hyphen three and one. So I know what's connected to channel two. And again, oops, sorry. And if I go back to channel one, I know exactly what's connected to it, which is the um, Airmar TM150, which is a uh, high performance chirp transducer, gives very good um, fish returns on this particular boat. All right, so that's how you do that. And again, anytime you change anything, you always wanna press save if you're prompted to do so. Now, once you've done that, you can see here on the sonar page, let me go just to sonar. So we'll go just to the sonar page. And you can see right up here that right now, right, it's telling me that, hey, all your information, even though I have it stopped because I'm not in the water, that your information that you're viewing is coming from the console active imaging three in one transducer. All right. If I want to change that, I just come over here into my menu and I go to source 
And because I have more than one transducer, I can change that. So I can go and switch my source up here to the console TM150. All right, when I do that, all right, it's gonna show right up here on the top of my display. Okay, so that's how you name your transducers. I did the same thing um, with a customer today up on the bow. We named the transducers there, same way. All right, and um, you know, I hope that helps. Now I'm out of the water, so this, this reading right here um, is actually a bogus depth reading, but there's the air temperature. When you get out on the water, of course, that would be correct. Sonar has to be in the water for it to work correctly, as most of you know. All right, so again, that's the procedure you would use to name your transducers. And don't forget, if you're not 100% sure, the silver tag on the back of the transducer, if you're able to get to them, um, will have that identification right on that silver tag. Um, if your unit is flush mounted, that can present a problem because you're not gonna be able to see those uh, silver tags without removing your unit from the console. But real quick, speaking of that, um, one of the reasons if you're, you're new to purchasing a boat that I would highly recommend against flush mounting them into the console is two part really. The first one I just explained, you're not able to see what's connected to the back of your units. You're not able to disconnect, reconnect anything if you need to. And um, most importantly, you can see right here this is a nine inch unit. If I flush mounted it or left it flush mounted, all right, my steering wheel would be right in the middle of my unit. It would be hard to access the menu items, the buttons and everything else. So if you're purchasing a new boat, really think about it. It's not that much of an extra cost, all right, to get something, a great product that, that I use is from Precision Sonar. Sonar accessories, they do a great job right with these custom uh, fabricated dash mounts um, everything right down to the caps that go over the screws um, it's a great company great people well thought out I know there's other companies that people use and um, they're just as good as well but uh, my preference is precision sonar uh, if I could say it precision sonar all right, and they have some great sonar accessories. Um, the bracket that I have up on the front, the side-by-side -side for my two HDS Live 9s up there, excuse me, um, is also from Precision Sonar. And uh, I just love the product. It makes the install so super easy. This is on a Ranger RT-188. It was very easy just to remove the console uh, shroud here. All right, take that off. All right, it wasn't a big deal. I just had to, uh, you know, take that off, keep track of where all the wires went to uh, my gauges and so forth, put this new unit in, run the cables through the back. Um, and again, all well thought out because all those holes and everything in the back are all pre-drilled for you. I'll give you an idea. All right, you can see right there that that hole in the center allows for all of my cables, power, ethernet two transducer cables and then even more if I needed them to come right through got an adjustment right here when you install everything stainless steel um, so I don't worry about this one bit 